Hello, uh, my name is Greg Sorter. My company is Luna Hemp, and today I'm going to be showing some uh, modifications we made to a regular pot still to make it into a vacuum still. Um, the reason we wanted a vacuum still is we wanted to uh, create CBD oils at a much lower temperature than is possible under atmospheric pressure. So we created this still. Uh, we can go down to about an 80% vacuum, which means that we can boil off the ethanol at about 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the advantage of that being then we don't cook off any of the flavors, the terpenes, or if we're making a whiskey or a bourbon or something like that, uh, we're, we're distilling it at a much lower temperature so we get uh, much uh, more flavor. So a couple things we had to do to create this still. Um, we took a regular uh, three inch diameter pot still and the first thing we needed to do was to connect it to a vacuum chamber. Uh, this is a vacuum chamber, uh, pretty easily found on Amazon. Uh, and the way we connected it, I know a lot of still purists will have a problem with this, but we used a Teflon tube. Uh, the advantage of Teflon, it's perfectly uh, impervious to ethanol. It's uh, pretty, um, it's, it, you're not gonna dissolve the Teflon into the ethanol. Um, so that's a, a PTFE hose, and we created a little fitting here, which we soldered onto the side of a hole that we drilled into the vacuum chamber, and then uh, used Teflon tape to seal that. So that's the uh, receiver, the receiver chamber. That's where our alcohol is going to end up after it uh, goes through the still. So what's going to happen then? We're using a propane turkey heater. We need a lot of BTUs because even though we're evaporating the alcohol off at a much lower temperature, we still do need a lot of heat to um, get that over the hump and into a vapor from a liquid. Um, so regardless of what pressure we're distilling at, we still need a lot of energy to, uh, even at 105 degrees, to convert that liquid into a vapor, which then is going to go up through the pot still. Uh, we're using a, uh, a Liebig type condenser connected to a garden hose, and then into the, the PTFE tube. Um, and then on the vacuum side, we're just using a really cheap single stage Harbor Freight vacuum pump. We don't need a, a two stage pump, and the reason being is because we only need to get about 80% of a vacuum. So we don't need a lot of overkill on the vacuum pump. And this is just over $100 for that, uh, that setup. So we have that connected into the fitting here on the vacuum chamber. And then on the other side, I actually uh, created a little bit of a vacuum relief that's adjustable. So I can adjust the vacuum to uh, a specific vacuum level if I want. I didn't need to do that. And the reason is I do have some small leaks in the system. So the most vacuum I can pull on this is 80%, which is exactly what I want. So what I'm going to do is we will open up the valve and I'm going to start evacuating the chamber, turning on the vacuum pump. I can see that it is the vacuum is increasing. It's going to get to about 80% vacuum. Um, now a lot of people are also uh, might be a little afraid of the still collapsing. I'm an engineer, actually a structural engineer, and I did find a formula for stainless steel that uh, as long as your wall thickness is at least 1% of your diameter of your vessel, you should be safe from any kind of a, uh, a collapse caused by buckling. Um, I do believe that this is about a three millimeter wall thickness and about 300 millimeters, so it does uh, meet that 100 to one criteria. And I have found uh, with a couple of evacuations that it does evacuate to 80% without any kind of um, deformation or anything on the side of the still. So um, because we do have a little bit of a leak, the vacuum pump does start smoking a little bit. And uh, that's because it is actually sucking air out constantly. Um, that's just something I have to deal with because I can't get it to be a complete seal with the setup that I've got. I do know where the, I do know where the uh, leak is happening. The leak is happening on, on this connection uh, between the, the, the head of the still and the, the boiler itself. 
I can actually hear it with a really high pitched uh, squeal there. But luckily none of the other fittings have leaks. Uh, the temperature port doesn't have a leak. Um, none of the, uh, this, this connection does not have a leak and that connection does not have a leak. So if I look now at the, uh, at the vacuum gauge, I can see that I am just about at the 0.8 value, which is uh, where we want to be in order to evaporate the ethanol at uh, 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the next video I post will actually be distilling off the ethanol from a ethanol CBD mix, and uh, we'll see what kind of production uh, rates we can have with just a simple three-inch pot still. So from Luna Pier, Michigan, this is Greg Sorter. Thank you.